this is one thing again I love about Sack. It gives me the options because they've, they've right. developed four 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 foods within that range. In fact, I'm going to forget multi season. I'm honestly, you know how much I rave about the stuff. I'm not a big fan of multi season. Uh, right. Balance, growth, colour. Three very practical foods for three very different purposes, and they are very different in how they perform. So depending yeah. on what you need at any given time, I would say, listening from what you just said, Frank, there was probably a bit too much faffing there for me in, in different mixes and changes and all the rest of it. I'm not a big yeah. wheat germ fan. Never have no, been. No, well, th this year well, there'll be no wheat germ. Yeah. Me and my mate my, did the trial and we're yeah. like, no, just balance. My, my experience of using wheat germ in the past is it makes them quite flabby. Because yeah. ultimately you're, you're still feeding something that probably at temperatures you might really dismiss feeding full yeah. stop uh yeah. but yeah so not not a big wheat germ fan i take that out of the equation the temperatures you're holding at you're going to breathe it with balance anyway and yeah. just just keep them ticking over uh and to be honest with you even at the the sort of what it says on the saki akari packet for balance i'd be quite comfortable using balance down to about 12 degrees yeah because your feed levels are so minimum it's not crazy high fat you know it's fat levels that really concern me in food when you're at lower temperatures that's yeah. the bit we've we've really got to watch. Uh, but yeah, so I'm 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 all about it's depending what I'm doing with the batch of fish. Absolutely no issues mixing. If you need full colour intensity, so if you're pushing, say for a show, you think I really need to hit the Benny hard now. Yeah. Absolutely, you're just going to feed 100% colour food. There's no point mixing it. You want it to get in there and do the job as quickly yeah. as possible. In my circumstance right now, however, I'm I'm focusing on growth. Yes, but I also know that I need to support the colour. Yeah. There's absolutely no way. If I just focus on hitting growth in the temperatures and how hard I'm pushing them now, what I'm going to have to end up doing is I'm going to, I'm going to knock the colour development back over quite a long period of time. Because as well as growing them, colour development, I think I've mentioned this before, it's like, it's like layers of paint. You're building it yeah. up, building it up, building it up over years. And what you don't want to do, say, say you cut daylight for a few months, all you're going to be doing yeah. is stripping back some of them layers and stripping back the development for a few months. Because what you don't want to get is, say say you're developing or trying to develop a shower up to a finished show specimen. What you don't want to do is, is get to a point where all of a sudden the zoom is naturally peaked at, say, five, six year old, but you're massively behind with the Benny because you've not been working on it. Yeah. So even given this growth, yeah, it's vital that I feed colour food right now to keep colour progression on track to some degree as the environment and the circumstances are working against it. And then I just choose I choose the mix dependent upon the varieties that I've got as well. So in a, in a general pond, say mainly go sankey base, I'll probably generally use uh, two thirds growth to a third colour. I just want that bit in there to support the colour development while I'm pushing the growth. Uh, right. And then as it as a sort of sort of drops down in the autumn, I might bring that up and start pushing a bit more colour, or generally have that period where I've got them sat at sort of eighteen degrees after the sort of autumn periods passed, and use an element there to condition them uh, a bit more if I want to. But right. no issue, no issues mixing it. The the food is going to perform because the whole sake range is is balanced. Yeah, you know, it's not like my my issue with mixing would be if you was going to put sake akari and then mix some Rice Krispies in with it. No. You know, that, that then is going to defeat every objective. Yeah. If, if you're in there, you do it. And even, even other additions to the pond, you know, treats. I'm not, I'm not dismissing treats. You know, certain ones are great, but it's other additives you might throw in, such as silkworm pupae, for example. Silkworm pupae is great, but you would really no need because it can be a real heavy pollutant of, of your pond and your water. Where Saki the growth is going to do it all anyway, without yeah. that heavy that heavy pollution that can come from it. And likewise with balance, if you're choosing to use balance, but you've got say nice 18, 20 degree water where you, you think I don't need to hit the growth, which I wouldn't advise the growth at that temperature unless you you're tactically trying to bulk them fast. Then yeah, uh, yeah you know, no harm having you know some colour mixing with your balance just to, just to hit that side a bit harder. But certainly no need for all that switching because let's say I if I was if I was working from that method right now I'd need to be feeding growth because of my water temperatures otherwise they'd be like skinny eels. Yeah. Uh I'd, I'd have a full five, six month growing season, then I'd have to probably spend as much time again just recovering the colour to get it back to where it should have been after that six months, if you follow me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you you want to keep it all going. It's all a, a process because likewise you want your for me you want your five six months of growing, then you want to ease off, bit of conditioning, a uh, bit of rest, get ready, prepped for that next growing season where you you go again. Yeah, I mean like at the minute I'm literally just in the the growing phase, let's say, but mm-hmm. I would I would probably add a little bit of colour in there just to support it while it well they are going for it but i would definitely wouldn't be doing color i wouldn't be rushing to get back on the color uh, on its own anyway just like you say blend a bit in yeah you don't you don't need to right i don't i don't foresee any any sort of time really other than serious show conditioning yeah uh, but even then even when you start on that process you've got to plan it out because you want a period you think about that whole preparation process you, you in, if you look at it from japan or even over here you've got size class targets to hit so you're working with keeping fish in certain sizes ideally wanting to max it out within the upper limit of the size class that you're in so yeah. you're doing that you you want to build the body right up because you've got to bear in mind throughout all this you're going to have a period ideally of seven days without feeding prior to a show so you've got yeah. them seven days. If you give seven days with no food and you sat at 25 degrees, all them gains over several months will just be stripped back mm. in such a fast, fast time, it, it would shock you. So you've got that to consider. Then you've got color conditioning to consider. Then that's obviously, you know, multiple elements, Benny, Sumi, Shiroji, depending on what we're dealing with. So you, you want to get that body. You want to build the color. So this might be a, a growth period, let's say growth color mix. And think right now i need to hit the benny hard so you go in and hit the benny but the minute you do that for sure you're going to lose shiroji a bit just with yeah. that intense growth and, and color food so then you've got to work on that shiroji and then bring that to a point where you've got all that right you've got a right water temperature where when you stop feeding you don't lose too much mass 18 degrees being that ideal one where you can you can do all this you can get everything nicely conditioned then you step off the food and after that seven days you've got your fish absolutely prime ready for your show but you can see right. there that, that's at least a good year's worth of planning that's a 12 month yeah. schedule leading up to one show i'm not you can I'm see not that sure. no no I'm but it's just it's just an yeah. interesting yeah, one yeah, to get yeah, it into yeah. and then you can see how yeah. the sort of show diary over here completely yeah. fucks all that up because you that, know in japan this is the, the, one, two, one. Yeah, the shows see. are all timed around the, the seasonal elements of Nishiki, of koi production yeah so you've got you've got breeders i mentioned nogami he is an absolute master he primes his fish in a mud pond everything's timed ready generally he likes to compete at nogio side nagoka show so they're they're yeah. all sat in that harvest season and he the last bit of preparation in his mud pond is maxing them fish out knowing that he harvests the pond on x day he's got x number of days in a concrete pond which is going to make it actually look better for a few days yeah. but also that there's a number of days if he leaves it too long the stress elements will kick in and it'll actually dip dip off he does all that yeah. time to perfection ready to get that fish into that show it's absolute peak but then after right. that that fish is back in fish house and it's, it's going nowhere for a while 